In this video, I'll show you how to use the Inset Faces and Extrude tools for precision modeling in Blender. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sasha, and I really wish those tools were a thing in real life, because they would make my life so much easier in my day job as a cabinet maker. They are, however, some of the most used and important tools when it comes to mesh modeling. And if you know how to use them correctly, they can be very precise too. So I'll guide you through the basic functions of the tools first before we look at the precision part of things. And then I'll show you how to implement them on a couple of practical examples. Okay, so let's look at the inset tool first. Now, if I select my cube here and I tap into edit mode and make sure I'm on face select, I can select my face and hit I to activate the tool, I for inset. And now I can start pushing my geometry in and create additional geometry around my face. At the same time, if I activate it again by hitting I to inset, I can hold control and push it either in or pull it out to give it some depth. Now, when I activate the tool first, we can see on the bottom here a whole bunch of options with their respective hotkeys that change the behavior of the tool. And we can also see those options here in our last operations panel. So let's go through those options. I can, for example, select multiple faces at the same time and inset them together. So if I select these two faces here and hit I to inset, I can inset them together and keep the connection where they meet alive. Or if I hit I again, I can inset them individually. Now that option also is in the last operations panel here. If I could toggle individual on and off, you can see how the behavior of the tool changes. Now, if I inset them together, you can see that they are a bit skewed and that's where the offset options come into play. Now offset relative, which we can see here, is not something I usually use because it scales the inset by the surrounding geometry which is not necessarily very precise and uh, it might be handy in a very artistic workflow. Uh, I personally never use this. What I instead use is offset even and with that we get a very precise inset and then we can work with numerical inputs to get the precise measurements that we want. So let's say we wanted to inset those faces by 400 millimeters precisely. We can type that in here and get a precise 400 millimeter offset. So if we want to work precisely with this tool, offset even is your friend. Now I also have the option to select outer and that automatically selects the newly created faces around our inset face, which can be handy if you just want to keep working on it and make, let's say a profile. So we could inset those faces again and maybe give them some depth. And just like that, we have created some interesting shape, which could be nice for some paneling or something. Now, another thing we can do is instead of making an inset, we can make an outset, which creates new geometry around the face instead of bringing the face in. So if I select my next cube here and select the top face and hit I to inset, I can hit O, which we can see on the bottom here, O for outset. And that creates the new geometry around the outside of that face, which can be used as maybe a replacement for making loop cuts and moving them into place. So for example, if I select the top and bottom face here and hit I to inset, O to outset and give it 100 millimeters, I have two loop cuts on my cube that have exactly 100 millimeters from the top face and the bottom face. So that's where the, the outset is very, very useful. And I'll show you on the practical examples later where that is very handy. Now, if we want to use those tools for precision modeling, one thing we have to keep in mind is the scale of our object. So I have one cube here scaled along the X axis in object mode. Now, if I select my top face here and inset this, let me just turn the outset off by hitting O. So I inset this, let's say by 250 millimeters. You can see that even though I have offset even activated, this is anything but even. 
And that is because my scale is not applied. So as I've said many times before, the one thing that is always very, very important is to apply the scale. So if I hit Control A to apply my scale, and the scale is back at 111, and now I take maybe the bottom face and inset that by 250. Now I get my even offset. Now another option that we haven't talked about yet is the boundary option. So I have a cube here with a mirror modifier. So if I look at it and turn the mirror modifier off, I can see that I have an open face here. It means there is a hole in the mesh. So and in a case like that where we have open geometry or holes in there, the boundary option can make our lives a lot easier. So if I were to take my top face here, hit I to inset, now it would treat it as an individual face. It's basically like we would turn the individual option on and off. Now, if I activate on cage on my mirror modifier, we can see that basically the whole top face would be treated as two individual faces. If we don't want that, however, we can uncheck boundary and that keeps the connection between those faces alive. So now if we were to inset that again and wanted to give it some depth as one big face, we can do that. If we now check the boundary again, it again treats it as two individual faces, similar to when we would toggle the individual option. But you can already see that with a couple of clicks and just that inset tool, we are able to create a variety of inter interesting shapes and it doesn't work just on rectangular shapes or quad topology. It works on uneven or irregular shapes too. For example, if I go to my cylinder, I can alt select my face loop around, hit I to inset, and then I hit I again to inset the individual faces and give it maybe 50 millimeters. And then I hit I to inset again, give it another 20, hit enter, and then I give it 50 millimeters of depth. And just like that, I have created a nice interesting shape with just one tool. Now it is important to note that on rounded surfaces, like for example, this one here, it does work on N-gons. That doesn't matter to the tool, but when we inset this here, for example, we have to be careful how far we go, because unlike, for example, the bevel tool, which has a clamp overlap option, the inset faces tool does not have this. So if we go too far at some point, as you can see here, everything will completely go haywire and overlap and destroy our model basically. So on shapes like this, we have to be careful with how far we go, but it works on N-Gons and it will create quad topology on the new geometry that we create around our face. And then we can also give it some, some depth and pull this out and have like a little pill shape here. Now, one last option I haven't mentioned yet is the edge rail. And that comes in handy on uneven surfaces. So if I go over to this, I don't know, 1985 sci-fi spaceship block out thingy, and let's say I want to inset the top row of faces here, but keep them together and not do it individually. So I select this and I hit I to inset, hit I again to turn individual off, and I inset them by a random value now. Now, if I go into front view, you'll notice that the faces are not flat anymore. And that's Blender trying to average out the geometry. So now if I hit edge rail, you can see we have perfectly flat faces again. So if edge rail is toggled, it'll inset the face along the existing edges. So if you have uneven surfaces like this, or if we go for these three faces here, and I do this in top mode, you can see when I start insetting them, now they're nice and flat. If I turn edge rail off, you can see that they come out. And that is not the result that we want. So on surfaces, uneven surfaces like this, we have to turn edge rail on, and that way we keep it flat. But again, we have to make sure that we don't go too far like I just did here because I didn't look at it because inset faces does not have a clamp overlap option. That is something to keep in mind. So let's look at the extrude tool next. And the extrude tool works with vertices, edges and faces. But for this example, we'll focus on the faces because I think that's what it's used for mostly anyway. And it makes more sense for our example here. 
So if I select my cube here and select the top face, I can hit E to extrude and it will extrude the face along its normals. So I can bring this up and it basically creates an edge loop where the old geometry was and I can move my face without influencing the below geometry. Now one important thing to know about the extrude tool, if I do this one more time, hit E to extrude and bring this up. If now for some reason I wanted to cancel the extrusion, it would not be enough to just right click or hit escape because it only cancels the movement part of the extrusion. So the underlying geometry is still there. So if I were to hit G on my face now, we can see that the vertices and the edges that the extrusion it created are still there. So if we want to cancel an extrusion, we always have to make sure that we hit Ctrl Z to undo. And that way, if I move my face now, it is again connected to the underlying geometry and we're clear. We don't have any double vertices which give us trouble down the line. Now I can also extrude multiple faces at the same time. So for example, if I were to select these two faces and hit E to extrude, it now extrudes those two faces together along the median normal. So if I turn the normal overlay on, I can see that this face has the normals going straight up and this face has the normals going straight along the Y axis. So the median normal of these two, the average, would be a 45 degree angle and that's where the normal extrusion goes along. If that is not what I desire, I have two options. I can either Alt E and extrude individual faces and that will extrude those faces along their individual normals and create new geometry in between them. Or if that is not what I desire, I can, if I select these two here, hit Alt E and extrude faces along the normals. So they still get extruded along their individual normals, but they keep the connection alive. And now you can see that is a little sloped and the normals are moving. They're getting sloped. So just like with the inset tool, we have the option to toggle offset even, and that will keep the normal direction alive and make the offset even along the whole extrusion. Now let me undo this because we have created some additional geometry. I'm going to extrude this one here and I'm going to make a loop cut down the middle to show you the next tool. So if I select my face here in between now and I hit E to extrude to push this in, we can see that we create additional geometry that we don't want. And it's actually overlapping here. So there's actually two faces here. There's one the shorter face and one longer face. So it's a whole mess to clean up and it, it'll take some work and it's something we can prevent. So if I undo all this and hit Alt E to extrude manifold, Blender now tries to keep it as clean as possible while I push that face in. Now the reason I put that loop cut in, in is to demonstrate that the extrude manifold tool only goes so far. So I can't go past that loop cut without creating additional faces that I do not want. So the extrude manifold is a nice option to have, but it only goes so far. And the more, more complex your shapes get, the less it works. However, it is something nice to have and it's good to know that. Now, of course, we can work very precisely with the extrude tool too by putting numerical inputs into it. So if I take my face down here, and hit E to extrude, I can say I want to extrude it by 500 millimeters and it will precisely do just that. If I turn on the edge length overlay, we can see now I have exactly 500 millimeters here, as long as your scale is applied. That is very important. Always apply the scale. Another example of the difference between individual faces and extrude along normals would be if I go to my cylinder here, and I'm going to turn off my edge lengths for the time being. So if I select my outer face loop here and hit E to extrude, the result is less than desirable, which is to say completely useless. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. So let's say I want to extrude this, the cylinder outward a little bit. I have two options. One option would be Alt E individual faces. And now if I push those out, it creates kind of like a spoke wheel or something because it pushes the faces out along their individual normals. 
but doesn't keep them connected. So it separates them. If that is not what I want, I can Alt E extrude faces along normals and that will push them out along their normals too, but it'll keep the connection between the faces alive. And we could get the same result by hitting E to extrude and then right click to cancel. Remember the geometry is still there and now we could hit S to scale and make this bigger. And we could also take the Z axis out of the equation by hitting Shift Z and that would get us the same result. Or we could hit Alt S to shrink and fatten our selection. And again, we can do this with very precise measurements by hitting Alt E, extrude faces along normals, let's say 250 millimeters, and we have exactly 250 millimeters extrusion. And now we can go and just combine these two tools to get very interesting shapes very, very fast. So if I go to over to my icosphere here, and I'm going to turn off my normals here because I don't need them anymore. So I hit I to inset and I still have individual toggled on, which is great. And I can say 50 millimeter inset. Now I want to extrude the faces along normals, Alt E, by let's say minus 50 millimeters. And now I can inset them again by let's say 25 millimeters. And I also want to give it some depth, pull this out by 75 millimeters. And then I want to inset this again by 25 millimeters again. And now I can extrude those along the face normals and bring them out like this. So you can see by combining these tools, we can make interesting shapes very fast and yet stay very precise with our measurements. So now that we know how to use these tools with its various options and how to put in precision measurements, Let's look at it in a couple of practical examples. So one of the most common things for my workflow is making cabinet bodies. And that's where I use these tools all the time. Now keep in mind, there's always multiple ways to get to the same result in Blender, but this is just another option that I can offer you that might be helpful in your workflow too. So let's take this cube, for example, and I want to turn this into a standard 600 millimeter cabinet body. So I'm going to make this 780 millimeter high and 600 by 600 on X and Y. I'm going to control A to apply my scale. Now, of course, one option would be to work with edge loops. So I could control R, make an edge loop there, GX 19, and do that on all four sides. But who would want to do that? I could also just extrude everything on the respective axes. But let's use a combination of those tools. So what I'm going to do is along the X axis, I'm going to go 600 minus 38 and I'm going to go into face mode, select my top and bottom face. And I'm going to hit I to inset 19 because I want to work with 19 millimeter material. And then I can hit O to outset and that will create two edge loops at 19 millimeters precisely. So now what I can do is I'm going to select one face here, one face here on either side, shift G to select coplanar, and then I'm going to hit Alt E, extrude faces along normals, 19. So now I'm going to take my front middle face here, and I'm going to hit E to extrude, and it's going to be 576 minus to inset that. And in the back here, I'm going to extrude it by minus 19. And just like that, I have used these two tools to create my, body, my cabinet body in no time. Now, all I would have to do is alt select these couple edges here and clean this up a little. Control X to delete those edges and boom, I have my cabinet. I'm just going to turn on cavity here so we can see it a little better. So that is just one option where these two tools make my life a lot easier. Let's look at another example. I have another cube here. And I want to turn it into a door similar to this one here. I'm just going to turn off all the other stuff here. So let's turn this cube into this door. On the Z axis, I'm going to need 2050. On the X axis, I want to have 800. And I'm going to make this 45 millimeter thick. Obviously, this drawing is way too big. I'm just going to select it and make it a little bit, a little bit smaller. That's a lot better. So I'm going to select my door here 
and I'm going to control A, apply my scale. So let's go into front view and see what we need to do here. We need a loop cut at 180. We need one in between here, one in between here, and then we need our styles along the side at 140 millimeters in. So let's do that by using the inset and extrude tools. So let's start with the top face where we want to have a loop cut at 140 millimeters. So I'm going to select my top face, I to inset 140, and I'm Blender remembers the settings that we put into those tools. So outset is still active. So I have now my, my loop cut at 140 millimeters. Then I'm going to go from the bottom up. So I want to make the loop cut here, then here, and then here. So I've already calculated where I need to be here. So I'm going to select my bottom face and I'm going to hit I to inset. And the first one is at 1031. Then I'm going to do the same thing again at 738. And I'm going to do that one more time at 180. So how do I get to those measurements? Well, it's basically the 180 plus 520 plus 76 plus 217 plus half of 76 for the first one. And then the same way to half of the 76. And then the 180 is given according to the drawing anyway. So now I'm just going to switch over to edge mode quickly and Alt select this one, Alt shift select this edge loop, Control B to bevel and give this 38 millimeters of a bevel. And because it goes 38 millimeters in both directions from the middle, we now have the 76 millimeter separation between those two. So if I turn on my edge length overlay here, you can see we have exactly 76 millimeters, which is according to the drawings what we want. So now we can go into face mode again Select one of these faces here, one of these. Shift G to select coplanar. I to inset 140. And that way we have our styles at 140 millimeters. I'm just going to go into front select wireframe mode. And in edge mode, I'm just going to make a quick cleanup here by box selecting all these ones. Control X. Go into the side view. I'm going to select all these here, control X, delete those. I'm okay with end guns here because that door is not going to deform. So now we have to make our panels here. And it doesn't give me an exact measurement here on how far these go in. So I'm just going to go with an 80 millimeter panel. And we also want to make a little profile around these. I'm just going to make it similar to what we have here. So I'm going to select all my three faces on either side here. And before I inset the panel itself, I'm going to outset it one more time. So I'm going to I, O for outset, and let's give this a 15 millimeter outset. Now, while these faces are still selected, I can select outer, and I'm going to hit I again, O, and I'm going to inset this by five millimeters. I'm going to uncheck select outer and give this a depth of 10 millimeters. So now I can go back to my main faces here, select all these. I'm going to Alt E extrude the faces along the normals by minus 20 to bring them all in 20 millimeters, which leaves five millimeter in between. Then I'm going to inset by 80 millimeters and give this a depth of 15 millimeters. Alt E to extrude faces along normals by another five millimeters. And just like that, we have a nice panel door. And now we can refine them as we want. For example, I would go into edge mode and alt select all these edges here on top of our profile and give this a slight bevel. I'm gonna turn on clamp overlap just to round these off a little. And additionally, let's say I want to have another profile on the inside here. I can alt select all these edge loops on the inside here and control B to bevel them, give them five to six segments, something like that. And then maybe a custom profile, pull this in, bring this out a bit. And just like that, I have a nice little profile on the inside there too. And now I can shade it smooth, give it a bevel modifier and harden the normals. Now, because of that, our sharp edges here have disappeared. So I'm going to go into front mode, edge select, 
wireframe and I'm just gonna box select and hold shift while I do that select all these chamfered edges here I'm gonna right click and mark them as sharp so now I actually see that nice little sharp edge that I want on those panels and just like that we were able to create a door with precise measurements from the drawing almost entirely by using the inset and extrude tools so hopefully that demonstrates to you how precise you can actually work with these tools if they use correctly but of course that's not the only way to work with precision in blender you can also do that while using modifiers and watching this video right here will help you understand how to do just that thank you for watching